Welcome, everyone. It's another segment of BamaInsider.com with Kyle Henderson. What's going on? Reporting to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama today. I'm talking about the defense. I know I told you guys the defensive depth chart video was coming. Here it is, all right? We're going to break it down from the defensive end all the way to the safeties. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Spread the word to other Alabama Crimson Tide football fans. We appreciate you watching our channel. And, of course, if you want the scoop, if you want to get the the premium daily nuggets, head on over to BamaInsider.com at checkout. The promo code is simply Roll Tide. We have to start out with six foot seven, 315 pound Raekwon Davis at the defensive end position, leading Alabama's defense. Yeah, Davis is like Alabama's version of the mountain from the Game of Thrones, right? 55 tackles last season, but this is the head scratcher. He had just one and a half sack. Now, this is what I call a money year for Raekwon Davis. He's playing for a future. NFL draft position. I mean, I, I think we can all agree that he's a first round draft pick if he can really light it up this season for the Crimson Tide. And I think a big reason why he's going to do that is new Alabama defensive line coach Brian Baker is working with Davis. And in the past, he's transformed guys like Leonard Little, Julius Peppers into stars in the NFL. And I think Raekwon Davis has shown more leadership. I think he's more dialed in, and you're going to see a monster come the start of the 2019 season. Behind Davis, it's probably going to be Christian Barmore. He redshirted last year. Big kid, six foot five, 310 pounds, and I think we saw a lot of immaturity from him last season. And I think it's going to take him a little bit of time to get out of that. But, I, but what I saw from him during springtime is a young man who's very willing to improve, working hard, to impress Brian Baker, who's a defensive line coach, and working his way up on the depth chart. He did record a sack during A-Day. I do like his athleticism. Don't sleep on Christian Barmore because I, I think once Raekwon Davis exits the program, we're going to be talking a lot about Christian Barmore. Now, another young gun who's an early enrollee is Antonio Alfano. He's a five-star early enrollee, six foot four, 288 pounds. Remember, this season... This spring season, he said he's already put on 17 pounds. He's a guy who's really eager to get onto the field. We saw a lot of good things from him during A-Day. If you go back and watch the tape, um, he's able to get to the quarterback. He can spin off and chase down running backs. Yeah, he's that athletic. So don't sleep on Antonio Alfano. I know a lot of people want him to, to come to Tuscaloosa and just jump in as a starter right away. But be patient. He's coming around, and we've heard some very good things about Antonio Alfano, about his work ethic, and about his willingness to get better going forward. So Antonio Alfano, probably third on the depth chart behind Raekwon Davis and Christian Barmore. As we talk about the defensive tackle position, big hole to fill, replacing Quinnen Williams. But as you know, Alabama... They simply reload. And this coming year, could it be an early enrollee starting at that defensive tackle position? DJ Dell has looked fantastic. Six foot four, 314 pounds. It's amazing that Dell, who arrived in December of 2018, is already repping with the ones during the springtime. He has great athleticism, really pops off the ball. I mean, you, you got to be really excited if you're a Crimson Tide fan that you have DJ Dell for at least three more seasons because coaches are, are excited about what he brings to the table. And I think it speaks volume that he was able to jump past Fidarian Mathis in springtime. Now, I don't think that that position battle is already won by DJ Dell. I think Fidarius Mathis, who's number two on the depth chart, alongside DJ Dell, those two are going to battle for that starting position. But either way, you have depth at a very important position, and especially you have someone to replace Quinnen Williams from last season because we all know how big of an impact that Quinnen Williams made last season chasing down the quarterback. As we look at the adjacent defensive end to Raekwon Davis, you have LeBron Ray, 6'5", 285 pounds. We saw splashes of his ability last year as a sophomore. 39 tackles, 2.5 sacks. He has agility to get to the quarterback um, he can stop any running backs that are popping outside. Very good in containment. So LeBron Ray, certainly um, a big name to know for the 2019 season at the defensive end position behind him. Guys like Stephon Wynn, Justin Abobe will also get their shot. But LeBron Ray is certainly a big-time player for the Crimson Tide this season. 
As we move forward and look at the linebacker positions, we'll break it up into Sam, Mike, and Will. That's the outside linebackers and the inside linebackers. And we'll start with the Sam position. It looks to be Terrell Lewis, who's coming off an ACL injury but was held out again this spring. Is he finally going to be healthy this season? I mean, he was he was hurt last year. He was hurt the year before. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but he's injury prone. Now, if he can stay healthy, I think we all know he's one of the most dynamic pass rushers or what could be in college football, but you have to stay healthy. Now, behind him, you have Christopher Allen at six foot four, 250 pounds, but another guy who was injured last season with the ACL. I've seen Sal Sinceri time and time again really rip into Christopher Allen. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but Chris Allen could be right behind Terrell Lewis. And then also watch for Kevin Harris, who's an early and early freshman who at times was repping with the ones this spring, believe it or not. 6'4", 220 pounds, moves really well. I expect him to get plenty of playing time this coming season. At the inside linebacker position, you have Dylan Moses returning one of the top Inside linebackers in all of college football last season, he had 86 tackles, which led the team three and a half sacks. Looked great this spring, and of course, he's going to be the signal caller for the 2019 season. Behind him, you have Markel Benton, who's a redshirt sophomore, and Jalen Moody. Both of those guys have been on the field before impact players. Jalen Moody, as a freshman last season, uh, really shined on special teams, had an interception during A-Day, and then Markel Benton um, got his feet wet last season, just under 20 tackles. Now, at the wheel position, that's the other inside linebacker position. Who's it going to be? I mean, I think we have a position battle right now between Joshua McMillan and some of these younger guys like Shane Lee and Ali Cajo. Now, Joshua McMillan has that senior leadership edge, but can he outshine a Shane Lee or Ali Cajo once we really get moving into August? Shane Lee, six foot, 250 pounds. Did, did anyone see that interception when he recorded it off Mac Jones and during a day and he was running down he looked like a a big time fullback running I mean 250 pounds he actually had seven tackles um during a day and Ali Cajo I think we all are excited about him a lot of athleticism 225 pounds um and, and don't forget about Christian Harris who was a, a summer enrollee so right now I think the wheel position is still open but you do have quality depth and Pete Golden has to be excited about that. As we look at the Jack outside linebacker position, you have Anthony Jennings, who's one of the alpha dogs on defense. He's now a senior. And behind him, you have Ayabi Anoma. Now, those two guys are very, very talented. Anthony Jennings, one of the more underrated players on Alabama's defense, around 260 pounds. He can get after the quarterback, very good against the run. And then Ayabi Anoma, I think we've seen major strides from him year over year, um, recorded a sack during A-Day. Um, behind him, you have Drez Parks. And then Ben Davis, who was injured this spring, dealing with some shin splints, but he's been moved from inside linebacker to outside linebacker position. I think Alabama is trying to find out where Ben Davis can fit on the defense. Now Ben Davis is a redshirt junior but has not seen any significant playing time at Alabama. When we move to the secondary, you have to like what you have at the corner positions. Trayvon Diggs, very good corner cover. Um, last season, he was dealing with the foot injury, so he missed a majority of the season, which is unfortunate for Alabama. Um, but I think with him back, and he looks 100%, that Alabama's secondary is going to be that much better from last season. A lot of people were asking, did Henry Ruggs play during A-Day? And yeah, he did, but so did Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs absolutely locked up Henry Ruggs, which is tough to do considering Henry Ruggs is a 4-2 type speed guy. So Trayvon Diggs being back at 100%, very, very important for the Crimson Tide. On the other side, you have Patrick Sertan, who's coming back after starting his freshman season at 37 tackles last season with one interception and Alabama is also going to probably play Sertan at that star position and when Sertan moves to the star position look for Josh Job who's now a sophomore to slide in at that corner position and Josh Job is an important name to know he's very good lockdown corner got some significant playing time last season so don't sleep on Josh Job he's very good very capable of holding down the rope at the corner position now at the star position, you're going to have Shaheem Carter. He's another senior on this defense, has a lot of experience. Last year, he recorded 43 tackles and took two interceptions to the, his house. 
Very talented, very underrated. Nobody talks about Shaheen Carter, but he always shows up, always brings his best effort, and he's a Swiss Army knife on defense. He can play corner, he can play star. If needed, he could play potentially safety. I mean, he, he's that good. He has that much experience. So Shaheem Carter returning for the Crimson Tide, very important. And then, as I mentioned, also at that star position, Patrick Sertan or even Trayvon Diggs could slide into that star position depending on what's happening out on the defensive side of the ball for the Crimson Tide. At the safety position, you have Jared Maiden. Uh, Jared Maiden is a very big hitter. He played with a lot of physicality this spring. He can come up and uh, make that big hit on a receiver to cause a loose ball. He can go up and grab the interception. He can put the hit on the running back. So anyone that he comes in contact with, know that Jared Maiden is bringing the boom. A. Smith, who's a sophomore, had a very good spring, recorded an interception during A Day. At the other safety position, you're going to have Xavier McKinney. All-American type player, very experienced, one of the alpha dogs on the defense. 74 tackles last season, two interceptions. He was the Orange Bowl defensive MVP. Behind him, you have Daniel Wright, who's now a redshirt sophomore, and DeMarco Hellams, who is a summer enrollee. I think overall, when you look at this defense, under Pete Golding, who's now the defensive coordinator, very good defense. And I think the lack of offense during a day was because of the first team defense. Now, you can't game plan, as Saban said, for a day and they don't have any type of game planning it's just you know the ones versus the ones but straight up this Alabama defense at least where they are now looks better than last year's defense which is very important and a couple reasons why Nick Saban wanted to add more coaching experience on the defensive side of the ball and he certainly did that adding guys like Sal Sinceri Brian Baker, Charles Kelly, all those guys have been defensive coordinators and have so much experience on the defensive side of the ball. So you put those guys around Pete Golding, who's one of the most talented young minds in college football. Alabama's defense is certainly upgraded for the 2019 season. We all know the offense is a plug-and-play type system, but I think we can all agree that the defense really needed to improve and that is going to allow the Crimson Tide to compete with the Clemson Tigers. Clemson has an extraordinary offense returning. And I think when we all look down at the college football road to the playoffs, those are going to be the two teams left standing once again. All right, Don't at me. Everybody knows that Clemson and Alabama are on a collision course. And the defense of Alabama is going to have to step up if they want to stop Dabo Sweeney because – Clemson's offense is going to be fantastic in 2019. I guess that's another video for another time. But for right now, we just went over Alabama's defense from head to toe. Very good. Locked and loaded for the 2019 season from the defensive end all the way to the safety position. Great coaching staff additions. Nick Saban made the defense a priority and rightfully so. Get ready for action-packed, hard-hitting defensive unit in 2019. Reporting from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, this is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com.